Hi everyone and welcome back. So lately I've been getting a lot of questions and comments about the BRRR or the BRRRR strategy which is a popular real estate investment strategy in the US. So today we're going to discuss what this strategy is, how it works and why in my opinion it doesn't work out too well in an Indian context. We're also having a look at some alternative strategies that are used by Indian investors to build their own portfolios. So first let's talk about what all these B's and R's stand for. The full form here is buy, rehab, rent, refinance and repeat. This is essentially a way to build your real estate portfolio and leverage cash flows to build assets which is also a really important part of wealth creation. So let's break down how it works. First you have to buy a property and preferably one that is under market value or distressed. Then you have to rehab or renovate and repair this property to make sure that it gets a higher after repair value once you are done with this part of the process. Then you rent it out and stabilize it by generating income from this asset. Next, now that the value of the house has increased post repair and rehab, you refinance or take a new loan out at this higher valuation and use that money to pay off any existing loans or cash that you have put into the property which should leave you with some spread. The final step here would be to repeat this process on other properties so that you can build out a portfolio that generates cash flow without investing too much in each property. Essentially, the first two steps here, buy and rehab, are the steps that add to the valuation or equity value of the property. The next two steps, renting and refinancing, are all about generating increased cash flow based on the new value of the property. Whether this is by charging a higher rent or taking out a new loan at a higher valuation, this step is all about getting value out of the asset. So now that we know what this strategy is and how it works, can it be applied to the Indian real estate market? Let's go through all of the steps and break it down. So let's talk about the first step which is buying the property. Usually in the US, this strategy is applied to standalone older houses that have potential to be repaired. If we look at property listings on aggregators, we can see that the vast majority of supply is in flats and apartments with a small amount dominated by builder floors. A builder floor is essentially an independent floor in a small low-rise apartment that is usually constructed and sold by the builder or landowner themselves. In the larger cities of India, older structures are usually redeveloped to make new apartment complexes and in cities where houses are prevalent, families would like to construct their home on a plot from scratch. Now that we have established that houses make up a very small proportion of this market, let's talk about price appreciation. We have spoken about the problems of supply and inventory overhang in Indian cities in the past. Inventory overhang is the amount of time it would take a developer to sell their existing inventory at the current rate of sales. In the last few years, the inventory overhang has been above 4 years for cities like Mumbai and New Delhi. In this scenario, given that the builder is still selling their inventory years after you have probably made your purchase, the chances for appreciation are low because there is still old supply available. Now let's talk about the next step which is rehab or renovation. Now that we have established that the vast majority of supply is in the form of flats and apartments, there is only so much value you can add by furnishing that apartment. Further, if you're looking to furnish and rent out the apartment, most of the flats available in the market today are semi-furnished and not fully furnished. So while you might get lights, wardrobes, fans and maybe a modular kitchen installed, there is usually no more furniture beyond that. For the fully furnished apartments make a much smaller market and don't really command that much of a premium on their rental amount. Let's move on to the next step which is rent. As we have spoken about before, the rental yields in India are much much lower than what you would see in the US. Average rental yields across the cities of India range between 2 to 5%. Even if you are able to command a premium on the rental due to you furnishing or renovating the flat, the chances are that it will still not be close to the rate of interest that you are paying any bank. For example, if you were to take a home loan to make this purchase, even though home loan rates are at a historical low, they are still way higher than the current residential rental yields in cities across India. Let's talk about the next and probably the most important step in this process which is refinancing. 
While you can get a loan against a property, the interest rates for these range between 8 to 11 percent. So now that we've spoken about why this strategy isn't very well suited for the Indian market, let's talk about some alternative strategies that Indian investors use. Investors here tend to prefer commercial properties because they have a much higher rental yield, which can be anywhere from 7 to 12 percent depending on the size, location and type of the property. Once you have a rented out commercial property, you can take advantage of rent discounting or loans against rents receivable, which banks give out for commercial properties only. The underlying logic here is the same to use the income and cash generated by the property along with the value of the property itself to raise capital from a bank. Instead of rehabilitating or renovating a property to increase its value, you can buy a commercial property and rent it out to a corporate tenant to make it an income earning asset. Instead of increasing a property's value and then taking a loan at the higher valuation, investors here prefer to pledge the rents receivable to get a portion of the asset's value as a loan. This way, the loan can be structured such that the EMI is always lower than the monthly rent amount. So while you only get a minuscule amount of rent every month, you get a significant portion of the property's value upfront as a loan, which can then be used for your businesses or reinvestments. However, with this, you do have to be very careful of the leverage ratio, which is the total amount of debt you have taken versus the value of the rental contract and the properties that you have. The main disadvantage with this strategy is that commercial spaces suited for corporate tenants tend to be large and often located in the central business districts of cities, which makes this a large investment. Alright everyone, I hope that this video gave you an idea about what this Burr strategy is and why it doesn't exactly apply to the Indian market. The housing markets in the US are quite mature and they have a large and robust housing finance market that has grown along with it. Further, given that the US is a developed country, investors have basically found opportunities in finding older houses that they can increase the value of. Given the way India has developed, in my opinion, there just aren't as many of these opportunities available at least in the cities of India today. Please let me know what you think in the comments below and as always, please remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content. Thank you.